Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, it's another controversial topic, but I'm here to tell you that all disease does not start in the gut. No, sorry, to tell you that it's not that simple. Okay, wish it were, it'd be great, but it's not, that's not reality. We need to get out of fantasy land. If you really wanna heal, you gotta be able to put the big boy pants on, or the big girl pants on, and be able to look at reality and not just what we wish it was. Okay, so I'm gonna get into this, and it's because, it, the reason why I'm making this video is because so many people have come into my world, right? They're either in my program or my group, and I see in their history, they've done some kind of gut program, gut reset, gut healing program, right? Yet, the symptoms persist. Yet, you're still on my channel trying to learn all the things that I'm sharing about our stage protocol and all this stuff, right? So yes, it can help, it can be helpful, but I'm here to tell you too that doing the right thing at the wrong time isn't always the right thing. So if you tried a gut program or a gut protocol or you've been focused on gut health, good for you, for one, good for you for being proactive and doing things to help your body. And second of all, what we're gonna learn today is how to actually understand when that would work and what happens when it doesn't and what that tells us. Okay, it's really, really important that we understand this because your body's a complex system. We can't just pin everything on one component of the system. It doesn't work that way. But with a little bit of understanding, we can flesh it out. We can figure out why that gut reset program you did didn't work exactly as well as it should have and what you can do about that. So let's get started. I'm very happy that the gut microbiome and gut health has started to make its way more into the mainstream medical wellness, complex chronic illness type of conversation, right? I'm glad, I'm very glad, because a lot of physicians that have been so compartmentalized for so long are starting to see connections, okay? That's important. I'm gonna expand on this, I'm gonna come back to this. And I know also this, this channel's for patients and people who are dealing with complex chronic health conditions like fibromyalgia and Lyme and mold exposure and chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue, long haulers, Epstein-Barr, Candida, autoimmune issues, right? There's a ton of these things. I could be doing this forever, right? This is a channel for patients, but I also know a lot of my colleagues come on here and watch a lot of these videos. So this video is for colleagues too, okay? Pay attention because just because we see one connection one place doesn't mean that's the only connection there is. Right? So good. I want to congratulate everybody for finding some connections. It's wonderful. We see the gut is associated with the immune function. We see the gut is associated with the brain function, right? We see that stress can affect the gut. Okay? It's, it's important. Even in Eastern medicine, which is where I have a strong background in Eastern medicine, right? Especially clinical herbalism, acupuncture, these kinds of things. Even in Eastern medicine, there are schools of thought that are all about the digestion. And it's important to have that paradigm. It's important to understand that. What I'm going to share with you in this video is that oftentimes that isn't enough, okay? It's, it's a great place to start thinking about systems, but it's actually not even the right place to start thinking about treatments for most people. So we have to understand, first of all, that we have triggers, right? Different triggers, environmental triggers. I've done videos on this. You can look on my channel here for videos on triggers and how to understand them, how to categorize them so that you know what's working against your healing, right? But you can start to categorize these triggers in terms of what body system they primarily affect. Okay, and while the digestive system is extremely important, it's not the only vector of damage to the body system. Okay, so if all disease begins in the gut, which is the argument that some people are making out there, right, then how come some people have fibromyalgia, right, from that started after a car accident that they got, right? Did the car accident affect their microbiome? Maybe, but really the car accident damaged their neck or something like that, and there's a structural component to it. Okay. How come, if all disease begins in the gut, how come we have Lyme disease, right? You're not eating the tick, okay? That disease began on your skin. These are just some, some examples. If all disease begins in the gut, how do we have toxic mold in buildings making people sick? And yes, that does affect the gut, right? That's one place it goes, right? But that's not the only place it goes. So not all disease begins in the gut. If all disease begins in the gut, then how do we explain complex chronic health conditions, and adverse childhood experiences, early childhood trauma, right? Somebody with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia or something like that, or another mystery illness, right? That basically came on because they had a really, really rough childhood. How do we explain that? Or if all disease begins in the gut, how do we explain when somebody gets sick, right? After they give birth, totally healthy, a woman gets pregnant, has a baby, and then after that, she's got some kind of mystery illness, right? Chronic fatigue syndrome, something like that, right? There's a lot more to the story than just the gut. So I'm here to tell you it's very well-intentioned, 
Okay, when some of these medical professionals are coming out and saying all disease begins in the gut, and I'm sure this is a controversial video, but that's, that's one part of the picture. We need to be able to look at a web, a web. And the web is the connection between the triggers that come in and the symptoms they cause and how they can jump from system to system. So yes, some disease does begin in the gut and you wanna have a healthy gut. This isn't me, I'm, I'm not arguing for like, ignore your gut, okay? This, this isn't the thing, all disease begins in the gut, ignore your gut, right? It's not that. All disease begins in the gut sometimes, right? Some disease begins in the gut and some disease begins in the immune system. Some disease begins in the neuroadrenal system, right? Some disease begins in blood circulation. Some disease is genetic. Some disease is from injuries. Some disease is from depletion, right? There's so many of these things. Now, what you eat is important. How you eat is important. Cultivating a healthy gut is extremely important, extremely important. And I'm here to tell you, that's stage two. When you start to organize healing in terms of what your body wants, stage one is immune system. Stage two is digestive, right? That's the gut. Stage three, neuroadrenal. Stage four, blood circulation. Stage five, if you need it at that point, hormones, mitochondria, that kind of thing, boosting, right? So when we look at these approaches, what we're seeing when we, when we come in it with, a, with a paradigm of like all disease begins in the gut, what we're seeing is only one piece of that connection. Right, so if you can see the triggers coming in, and these triggers can be immune triggers, digestive triggers, neuroadrenal triggers, blood circulation triggers, depletion triggers, right? Which would be like mitochondria, hormones, those kinds of things, wearing down your energy, staying up too late, all that. I've got, just look at the trigger video. I'm not gonna go through all these things in depth in this one because I already, I already did that in another video. And then we have symptoms, right? Which can manifest in different stages, different systems. So we have immune symptoms, we have digestive symptoms, we have neuroadrenal symptoms, right? We have blood circulation symptoms like cold hands and feet. We have um, depletion symptoms. Now, what's really interesting is that a trigger can go from one system, right? It can enter a system. You can have a digestive trigger and then you can have a symptom somewhere else, right? Like maybe you eat something you shouldn't have eaten or maybe you're, for example, okay, let's say you're having, a, let's say you got Hashimoto's, right? Thyroiditis, just, just for, um, example here. So you've got hypothyroid happening. Your thyroid function is down. The reason why it's down is because your immune system's attacking your thyroid. The reason why your immune system's attacking your thyroid, maybe for this example, is because gluten looks a lot like thyroid tissue. That's called molecular mimicry, right? You can look that one up or I've got other videos on molecular mimicry you can check out. So you're eating gluten, it's getting through, you got like a leaky gut problem, right? And now you're eating gluten and it's coming in and your immune system's going nuts about that. And then you're getting this thyroid issue. So in that case, what have you got? You got a digestive trigger coming in, right? And it's manifesting as a hormonal issue, right? Via an autoimmune process, okay? That's one. Does that mean it began in the gut? Maybe, right? Maybe we have leaky gut, but why do we have the leaky gut, right? Did it actually begin in the immune system? Do we have other factors coming in? That the immune system's not handling and it's just causing rampant inflammation there? Not all disease begins. Even if it's a digestive issue, it doesn't necessarily mean it began in the, in the digestion. It's really qu quite interesting with this stuff, how it starts to, it's very complex, right? But once you start to, to draw it out, you can start to see it doesn't have to be that complex. You can make it much more straightforward. This is part of my job. When people work with me, I map this on their body. What's going on with you? What are these triggers that affect you? How do they affect you? What are your underlying processes? How do we connect the dots, literally, right? And sometimes it does begin in the gut, right? But I'll tell you, when the rubber meets the road, right? When you get your boots on your ground with healing, if you start with the immune system first, that oftentimes sets you up for a healthier gut in the, in the first place. So that's why immune stage one, because when you get the inflammation to calm down and you get more immune, what they call immune specificity, which means just not generalized smoldering inflammation everywhere, right? But you get that dialed in then your gut can actually calm down. A lot of the gut lining is less irritated. And then when you go to heal your gut with probiotics or enzymes, or I, I like herbs and I like special practices for that, like Qigong types of things and self-massage, right? And also the way you eat, what you eat, very important, right? Once you start to take the gut-centered approach after that, you've unlocked the gut because you started to get the immune system dialed in first. You're gonna have a much easier time having lasting changes on the gut health, which then of course does connect, right? The gut health does connect up to the brain the gut health does feed back to the immune system, right? Now you're creating a virtuous cycle instead of just kind of picking one of these stages and starting randomly and just hoping that all disease begins in the gut, right? Because we've got microbiome research now. Great.
the, so the research is caught up on one connection of how the gut connects to these other things, right? But what about how the immune system and the neuroadrenals connect to each other? What about how the immune system and the hormones connect to each other, right? What about how blood circulation and neuroadrenal connects? These connections, it's like every piece, you gotta understand the whole web, not just one strand, okay? So I know this can get complex. I know that I probably said a lot of things in here and you might feel like you're drinking from a fire hose, right? Where you're just getting it's like too much information. That's okay, you know, rewatch the video. I try to break this stuff down and make it as, as straightforward as I can. And you know, check out the graphic. I'll include the graphic in the description below. So you can see this pattern. You can start to figure out kind of how these connections are working in your body. Because you might notice that, you know, you don't have any problems with blood circulation, right? But maybe most of your stuff is like stage one or stage two, or maybe it's all stage two, stage three, or some kind of varying uh, ratios, you know, amongst all of them. But you can start to map this out. This is the kind of work we're doing in our group. I've got a vault full of interactive videos where you can really get your fingers on your own pulse in terms of how your body's doing with all this. So you can start to figure out where you should start, right? So you can get a handle on your next steps because it doesn't always start in the gut, even though the gut's super important right? It's not either or, it's and both, right? But again, when you start adding things and you start to see a whole system, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So the best thing to do is to line everything up so you can get the right combination of therapies in the right order so that you don't get overwhelmed, okay? Because overwhelmed people don't do anything. They don't heal because you're overwhelmed. So you, you freeze, you get paralyzed. So a lot of what we do in our group, right? If you're dealing with these kinds of issues, you may consider joining our group. It's free to join as a guest. You've got great company, but a lot of what we're doing in there is getting organized so you can figure out what your next steps should be. You can ask me anything in there. It's free to join, like I said, and I'll still give you my perspective. I keep the group small, I keep it cozy so that I know who I'm talking to. So when you ask me a question, I, I can give you a personalized <laughs> like suggestion. You know, So I, I try to know the people that are in there, but that the trade-off then is that um, I can't have 10,000 people in the group, right? Because then I won't be able to keep track of everybody. So I keep it cozy, there may be a wait, Right? If your application looks really good, like you're going to be a great fit for our culture and our community and our approach to healing, then I'll let you know and get you in just as soon as I can. But just know it might be, you know, a month, might be two months, something like that. Might be sooner if I can if I can get you in any sooner. But I do give everybody the same fair opportunity. It's first come, first serve. So your application's in the description. And in the meantime, you might consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and doing other things to train the algorithm to show you more videos like this, more things that'll actually help you move the needle on healing your body because that's probably the most important thing you got going on right now, right? If you're dealing with a complex chronic health condition or some mystery illness or some inflammatory thing or autoimmune or whatever, it's likely jamming you up and stopping you from living life in a lot of other areas. So once you can get that blockage handled, you can start to go out and have fun again and be spontaneous and make plans and travel and dance and do all these things, right? But first you got to focus on your health. So I hope this video helps you understand something very complex and break it down to something more straightforward. And I also help, hope that it helps you understand that when we see a complex system like this, we can't just zoom in on one link arbitrarily and just put all our chips on that because that's that's the recipe for uh, disaster, right? If it doesn't work, then you start to get like hopeless or you start to feel like your morale is going down. So don't fall for it, okay? There's a whole system here. We can't just blindside ourselves to only look at one piece. It's important to have the big view too. All right, let's get you feeling better. Cheers.